welcome to WRPV and WRPV Studios. So, I say it a million times and I'll say it again, always use a professional. If you don't use a professional, it's going to cost you at least five times more in money and ten times more in frustration. And there are things that you use a professional for, but you end up being the hub. But there are people like the gentleman sitting next to me that become the hub so you don't have to go to a million different parts and they can control almost like having a primary with me is eric wilson hello how you eric doing s wilson correct okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few eric wilson's in town so yeah we don't want to but it's an easy thing. name for me to remember it's very easy and it's legacy resource center legacy resource centers here okay. in stored all right so my first question is why don't you tell us what Legacy Resource Centers is a comprehensive place where you can do your what-if planning and your legacy planning. So we focus on four areas of concern, the legal planning, wills and trusts, financial planning, preserving your money, illness planning, what if you're sick, uh, and the, if I said the legal planning, I apologize. Yeah, the wills and trusts, I said in the beginning. Right. So the legal illness, financial, and um, the insurance right? planning. You know, Medicare. whether it's Medicare, final <laughs> expense life. But what we try to do is we try to keep it under one roof. Right. So you don't have to, like you mentioned, the primary. You don't have to go to 18 different places. But if you do, your primary could say, hey, you need this specialist. Or, hey, maybe you need this going on in, in your life to right. make sure your health is preserved. In my world, it's your financial health and the, and the health of your legacy when you pass. Okay. So how long have you been around the industry? Because you've I've been, been with doing people, this. 1996. Personal... I was first licensed in 1996. Okay, why did you get into this? Um, honestly, I was at uh, University of Montana. I was working People downtown Montana? Montana. Back then, there were only a few. Okay. Um, uh, and I was bartending. Guys that would come in were young advisors. So I begged to work in the office. I stuffed envelopes, and I got my license and started doing fixed income type of stuff for senior planning. And now my practice is just, it, it's not the product anymore. It's how is it all going to fit? So the day after you're gone, nobody's going, holy crap, what do we do? What did he right. have? How do we do this? What about the house? What about the car? What about the bank account? And if you're looking at that, <clears throat> you've heard me say this before, my mom was pretty sharp. She got long-term care and pre-need. So when my, parent, when my mom and dad passed away, there was almost nothing for us to do. I'm going to say that to that, where she fell short was in her financial planning. Because though my parent, I told my mom to spend her money. I didn't need it. But the place where they, she was getting rehab after UTI basically killed her. And though I don't like to sue, I sued. And won. But my mom passed away. So now where's the money? In probate. Okay, she didn't have a probate attorney, didn't have a, 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 a state planning, right. zero. Right. So now, for the last year and a half, that money has been sitting in probate. Right. Because there's a rift between my brother and I. Of course. So they can't it's get the papers they typical, need from, yeah. from him. Yep. And that money just sits. Yep. Had she done it right, that wouldn't be an issue with it. Right. Or if she had someone to say, hey, you know, there's a better way. You know, I have a young 43-year-old new client. Her father was a new client July of last year. He passed away in February. I didn't even have a chance to do planning with him. So now we have to probate a boat, a van, $30,000 in a bank account. That, we have to probate that. Whereas if I was able to sit with him and, and, and design a plan where everything would have passed to his only child, with no kid, she's the only child, 43 years old, not married, no children. I feel awful as an advisor. I feel like I didn't do my job. I didn't have a chance, honestly. Well, okay. But my point to this is we don't know when we're gonna go. That's true. We don't know, and not all of us get to get old. I know, and we talk about that. And there was, it's kind of silly because in my mind, <coughs> and my brother's mind and my mom's mind, there was no need. We had a will. She didn't have anything, everything that was in the will. But the lawsuit came after she passed. Right. Which ends up going through probate. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a nightmare. 
You know, interestingly, so many of my clients say to me, I don't have a lot. I don't need that type of planning. But they fail to realize that they don't die broke. There's always an asset in their name. And if it's not properly registered and titled, it will go to probate. And that process to probate, whether it's a million dollars or a thousand dollars, it's time, it's money, it's resources that the loved ones necessarily didn't expect to have to put up. And in my world, it's like, look, you can either leave that mess behind or you can or you can just do a plan. Yeah, but I don't have much. It doesn't matter. It's the plan. Right. Put the right. plan in place because you never know that you may die of an accident and there's a lawsuit that flows into the estate after. Now, if mom had a trust, it would have gone through, but it would still gone through probate. But the trust would have potentially protected you and your brother. So there's there's so many better ways to plan. So there's 50 grand that's just sitting. Sitting. Okay, now, thank God my brother and I don't need the money. Okay, thank God. But... It, can you imagine if there was 50 grand of your money that wasn't prepared to come to you and now you can't get it, you can't touch it, and you might need it to live, especially in this economy, okay? Now, and it shouldn't sit in probate. Nobody right. should have assets that are susceptible to probate. One thing that I learned is if you have an attorney who drew up your will, that attorney knows the loved ones are coming back because there will be something to probate. In my world, I wish attorneys took it a step further and said, look, I don't want you to come back. So even though you don't have a lot now, you have a trust. So this way, if anything happens, you don't need me. You don't need the Florida court system or the New Hampshire court system, wherever you are. These assets will flow out of your estate with no attorneys needed. And I can't tell you how many times I've distributed assets via trust documents versus wills. Well, you know, what's interesting about the whole situation is if when it comes to money and assets, for lack of a better word, and family, there's always going to be an issue. I don't care how close. I'm close to my brother. I was close to my brother. Now there's an issue. If the, if my mom had done it properly, and I, I, I'm i not blaming her per se, right. my brother and I probably wouldn't have this issue that we have today. It's like you wouldn't even, it wouldn't even exist. Because right. the issue was squashed before mom passed. Right. You know, it's like, you get this, you get this. If we split it equally, you get this and you get this. And you would have been like, we miss you, mom. Right. But, and it wouldn't even been a mindset or a thought of, oh my God, we need attorneys, we need this, we need that. I have a young, a young uh, I have a client, she's 80, she's becoming forgetful, so I'm dealing with the son. He's 45, a little younger than I am. So I'm trying to coach and counsel him that it's not the products because there's a lot of money involved. It's not the products or where they are or how they are, it's the plan. I don't want you as a police officer in New York having to deal with after mom goes. Let me put everything in place so all you have to do is say, mom passed. Right. And then the machine starts working, assets are distributed, no attorneys needed. But it, it takes time for people to understand that distribution concept. Well, because we don't, there's so many things we don't understand. <clears throat> we don't talk about it. I, people don't I go, talk about it. When is the best time to start a financial plan? Yesterday. Okay. And that's true. And it doesn't matter how I, old you are. The plans or how that much I money do, you have. it's not even the money. Right. It's the plan. See, interestingly enough, a, a lot of young people that I deal with that are new homeowners, they want to protect their mortgage with a life insurance policy. But they, they're not explained that that death benefit that would go to your loved one doesn't necessarily pay off the mortgage. It can provide a monthly income check to make the life of the living spouse easier. Maybe you have young children. You can't just say, hey, have a life insurance policy to pay off your mortgage. What about the bills, the expenses, the real estate taxes, the insurance? It, it's an interest. But to me, it's a way to get attention. But in my world, it's like you could potentially be putting somebody in a worse situation. Well, you're the expert. So <clears throat> I believe, and I could be wrong because I'm not an expert at all, that before you go out and get insurance um mortgage insurance where it gets paid off if you pass it's just go yeah. get a life insurance for that amount of money well the life insurance is it's marketed as mortgage protection 
But in my world as an advisor on the distribution side, you should just have life insurance. Right. So this way, when you pass, whether it's yesterday or two years from now, your loved ones aren't sitting there holding the bag wondering how they're going to pay the bills. And you can use the it's money. It's the marketing. To... And the sad thing is, is you look at advisors that don't do what I do and they just, they chalk it up to, it's just not what we do. I change your oil. I have no idea how to check your washer fluid. Well, what do you mean? You know cars, right? You're, you're a mechanic. Right. Hey. Look, you come here for an oil change. That's it. Right. We don't check your fluids, but that's crazy. I'm going to go to someone that will be all encompassing. Go, look, while we're here checking your oil, let me check that fluid. Let me make sure this is right. Because God Aaron forbid something happens, you know, right. what you ifs. Know, it's, it's, it's interesting because <clears throat> the only gamble we, we hope to lose in life is to insurance. Okay. We hope that we never have to use it. We pay it. It's a gamble right. that we hope we never have to use. Right. And I've been on my deathbed three times, <laughs> and I'm at my life insurance policy. I pay into it. I hope I never have to use it. I will because none of us get out of it's here. It's the only definitely. insurance you want to pay out. Right. You don't want to put a claim in for your homeowners. God forbid. Cars, if you're putting a claim in on your car insurance, something happened. You might not be able to use it. You always want to have your life insurance pay out. Why wouldn't you? That's why you have it. You're right. not going to live forever. Have those policies. That, but make sure it pays out properly because it's <coughs> got to have a plan. My world is legacy. You're not going to live forever. So whatever you have will pass down the blood. We have to make sure that it's not susceptible to risk and loss. People don't think about that while they're going to work. No. They think about getting home and eating dinner. Right. And you don't know. Again, for me... I got back from a, a trip, I was returning to rent a car, and all of a sudden I had a heart attack. Didn't know, okay? And not, every day is not promised to you. It's not. Okay? So, the scenario is, you want to put these things in place so that they're not things that, because you're not, if you pass, it doesn't matter to you, but... It's the it's loved the ones, yeah, yeah, okay, yep. that have to deal with yep. these things that are going on. That they, in turn, have to say, "What do we do?" and have to have a fight, like I'm having with my brother. Right. Okay. It's so important to use a professional. We're getting a tough time. How do people find you? You have a phone number? Uh, seven seven two two three six eight four two zero, and I'm right here in store uh, by the downtown Publix, the four big financial buildings here in town. Yeah, those are. Those take up that big space there. They sure do. Okay. They sure do. It's and a good landmark. Enough, when I was opening, <coughs> this was the first building I came into, and I couldn't make the deal. And I looked in those buildings. I was going to open up in those buildings. And for some reason, something happened, and I couldn't get the lease done the way I wanted it to. And I've been in commercial real estate for right. 25 years. So I came back here for the heck of it. And I was able to put the deal together. I... Love Martin County. I'd move my business to Martin County in a heartbeat, but I had the best landlord in the world. Right. And you have a great space here. Okay. It's a great space. Right. And, and I, I'm blessed. And I've managed to learn from mistakes that my parents made, especially not having a trust because, again, 50 grand sitting somewhere in space I can't use. Thank God I don't need it. But that doesn't work for everybody. I was uh, luck. You mentioned you were sick, right? So a couple of years ago, I don't know, I had some kind of infection and it put me in the hospital. I had uh, high cardiac enzymes, almost heart attack. And even when I was sick at the hospital, I know I got a life, I got a ton of life insurance. My trust is in perfect shape. The real estate's protected. My wife will be fine. The kids will be fine. And that's the that's only the thing I think be. about. And unfortunately, I carry it around for a lot of people. Right. Because that's all I think about for people. Guys... Again, use a professional. Eric's here. Give him a call. I'm sure he'll talk to you and give you some idea of what you need to do and where you're at. And we'll go from there. What's your phone number again? 772-236-8420. My time is free. My consultations are free. And I don't make money that way. So you can call me out of the blue and ask me any type of question you want. It Other doesn't than... hurt to know. Knowledge is king. Eric, thank you, thank sir. You so I much. appreciate you. Everybody thank you. will be right back. Thank you.